Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this video, I'm going to showcase how to deploy microsweeper based on Quarkus application on Azure Red Hat OpenShift, also known as Arrow. Let's get right into the demo, how it works. In this demo, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step how to deploy Quarkus application to run a microsweeper, uh, which is a microservices application. Uh, we just Converted existing Minesweeper, if you are familiar with the Windows operating system gaming, is to, you, you're going to really familiar with that. And here's the three steps you're going to run this Quarkus application on your local machine, uh, just like uh, local testing. And then we're going to deploy this application to Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which is a containerized application. And which application actually connect to external PostSQL, which is also running on Azure. And then the last uh, step, we're going to evolve this application as a serverless function, uh, which allows you have reduced your memory and CPU resources on your production environment. The three step, that's your application and deploy application and a serverless function as well. So here I already cloned this GB repository. As you can see, this application already implement based Quarkus uh, framework. There's an entity class which allows me to connect uh, process SQL uh, using uh, Hibernate or RM Knush. And then there are CDI bins, uh, implement based services. Uh, you can have a transaction to store your uh, mine uh, sweeper score in a, a reader board. And then you can also go to meta info directory, you can, a bunch of the HTML file and the JavaScript actually rendering your mine sweeper game on your Java application. So one of the interesting part, when you go to application.property files, so you don't have any compilation at this moment, just empty file. But when you go to palm XML, you already pull down uh, Hibernate or Panache, which allows you to connect to PostSQL, but also you have a JDBC uh, PostSQL uh, Maven dependency, which is we can also practice the extension. When you add this extension, Quarkus automatically spin up your uh, demo services to specifically database. In this case, we're going to specify PostSQL, which means Quarkus dev services automatically start PostSQL container on your local machine uh, during Quarkus demo. Let's try to start Quarkus demo using Quarkus CLI. You can also use Maven or Grad command line tools. So once your Quarkus uh, runtime started, in the meantime, you can see there are Docker container automatically start up. You can actually use a Podman as a container runtime. And then uh, when you start, let's try to uh, make sure you're uh, running process on the Docker. And then here are PostSQL and test container are uh, running for your local machine. And then when you press the W on your runtime, Quarkus console, and it uh, bring you into a landing page or local environment, just like this mine sweeper. But this is uh, running on Quarkus. The reason why we uh, implement this game application with Quarkus is because we have a bunch of benefits like a dev services. You don't need to install or pull down OSSQL. A lot of developers maybe prefer use H2 in memory data or local machine because they don't enough resources or enough time to spin up your PostSQL or try to access external uh, PostSQL database uh, in order to avoid the gap between dev and production environment. But Quarkus dev services avoid that kind of possibility or human error at the very beginning of your inner development process. So this is one of the great feature of Quarkus. Uh, for developer to develop microservice application from local to Kubernetes environment. So let's try to uh, play uh, just a Minesweeper just for fun. And I'm gonna pick, try to avoid the uh, mine, but uh, I got a bad luck. And then try to couple more times. And then we have the score with a uh, generate random name and uh, we force one and then here's a medium level. Okay, I just three trial and let's go back to uh, my application and runtime and try to access one of the LESPO API to find that scoreboard just like we saw in the uh, web UI. Okay, so same LESPO result uh, when you saw in the dashboard. Okay, it's pretty cool. 
So I'm going to start my dev mode, which he, uh, automatically uh, start my running container process as well. So the next step, I'm going to add one more extension uh, OpenShift, which allows me uh, to make this application to deploy OpenShift cluster running on Azure. This is my Azure portal dashboard, and I already uh, installed OpenShift cluster on Azure, also known as Arrow. And when you go to uh, the cluster, and then you can have OpenShift console URL, and then go to that URL I already loaded. It. And then here is my empty project, MicroSQL Dash Quarkers. I'm going to deploy my application into that namespace. And then but for that, I'm going to install Azure PostgreSQL uh, server. So there's a multiple option. You can create Azure database for PostgreSQL. I'm going to try to use single server because this is a demo. I don't need the high availability or clustering. So I'm going to uh, set my resource group, which is the same resource group as my OpenShift cluster. And here's the server name, MicroSQL Dash Database, and then admin, Quarkus, and password, my super secret password here. And now I'm going to create my PostgreSQL database. And then it will take some time, but I'm going to make it faster, this video, uh, to save with our demo time. So here's one thing you might in, uh, understand. So in a reality, uh, maybe you got some option to deploy your database itself on top of the OpenShift Edge container. But common use cases on production environment, you already have your own database on your existing infrastructure like Azure or even external database. So in this demo showcase how easy and uh, quickly Quarkus connect to external database running on same Azure cloud. So to do that, I just create a new PostSQL. And once the uh, PostSQL created on Azure, let's try to uh, configure some security configuration a little bit more to access from my Quarkus application to PostSQL. So here just server name and admin username automatically generated. And then here to uh, connect to security. I'm going to change it to allow Azure services, yes, and then just leave enforce SSL connection like a TLS termination stuff. You can actually uh, switch it to disable for the quick demo, but let's try to uh, give it a uh, enable more security uh, stuff and then uh, how to work as computation uh, try to access to through SSL connection. All right, hey, I think it's almost done. I just save a new configuration, uh, go to up, and then it takes also a few seconds or a minute to uh, update the configuration. Okay, go back to my Quarkus application and try to add more uh, configuration here. So first of all, you can see the database configuration. Uh, maybe you are interested in uh, uh, some of the prefix here, the percent product dot, which means that this configuration already picked up by Quarkus framework for the uh, production environment when you package this application, which means when you run Quarkus demo, this configuration will not be up, uh, your runtime application. Okay, so first, uh, PostgreSQL database configuration, I'm going to use your PostgreSQL, and then here's the uh, JWC URL, uh, you can just copy from your uh, Azure dashboard. Their uh, name and the one interesting uh, when you go to Azure dashboard, your server name, you can copy that. And here's the admin username. I just paste it here and then my super secret password, uh, write that thing. And then I'm gonna try to generate this database and then drop and create. Uh, just first time, we're gonna go to this database. I'm gonna create a schema here. And here's the OpenShift configuration, which allows me to deploy this application, packaging application like a job file, but also packaging container file and deploy uh, existing container registry, which is one of the internal registry on OpenShift. In the, in the end, the Kubernetes cluster, uh, also OpenShift worker node, actually pull down that existing container image into one of the available worker nodes, and then that container pod will be start uh, in a minute. Okay, to do that, yeah, you can find here uh, some of the application. One interesting part here, uh, the OpenShift uh, and the Quarkus actually provide a multiple build strategy, for example, Docker and S2I, a source to image build and the binary build and a build pack as well. You can select uh, your preference to build uh, the container image on Quarkus application. Okay. 
So uh, one thing interesting part, the JDBC URL at the end of, I just edited SSL and uh, equal required, which means to, when you access uh, PostSQL on Azure, there are SSL connection. That's why I edited that parameter at the end of the JDBC URL. So now I got one more thing to add the database on my Azure PostSQL using Azure Pay. Azure command line. This is uh, because when you uh, create a database on Azure, there's an empty database. So I'm going to uh, create a new score database on my uh, PostSQL server. And the Quarkus automatically uh, add more schema uh, when you Quarkus try to access that uh, PostSQL. So now I'm going to try to build this application using Quarkus CLI, like Quarkus build. I'm going to uh, just skip the unit test because this is a demo thing. So it takes a few minutes, but I'm going to make it faster this video uh, to, to a little bit save time. In the meantime, let's go back to our Quarkus project directory. You can find the Docker directory and there are a bunch of Docker file. For example, uh, you're going to build this application JVM, like a job file. And then uh, Quarkus actually provides a fast start. And then another Docker file is a native. So one of the benefit of the Quarkus framework to allow developers have multiple package type, one of it is a Java, Java file, and the other one is native executable, which you don't need to run the executable file on JVN, instead a GraalVM, which is a tremendous fast startup and response time and tiny memory for free. Okay, so you can pick that up, uh, or which Docker file you want to build. And then go back to uh, my terminal window, it's already uh, deployed. And then go back to OpenShift uh, Developer Developer Console UI. And then the application already deployed. When you go to View Logs, you can find the Quarkus version. And then as you can see, uh, 2.3 seconds uh, to start up time. And then just remember this uh, start up time, and we're going to compare with the native comparison executable file. So when you access the endpoint, and you're going to same uh, GUI, the Minesweeper, but running on Azure and OpenShift and Arrow. So try to a uh, couple more time to uh, avoid the uh, mines and then clear the mine. So I got a three time and a really bit good, uh, better uh, score at this moment. And let's, let's go to uh, Azure portal to open Cloud Shell to access the PostSQL, the data actually stored in my uh, PostSQL on Azure. Just double check. Okay, I'm going to use a PSQL command line and host from copy from the server name. And here's the username, admin username from copy the Quarkus at Microsoft and database. And the port is a 5432 is a default port number. The one more thing is the DB name is score, which I created using Azure command line. And then I'm going to access that uh, with my super secret password or red thing. And then uh, I just access that. And let's try to select all data, uh, select the asterisk for uh, score. Uh, my data table, and then you got a three uh, data already created, just like you saw in a uh, Minesweeper GUI. So let me try to one more time, try to Minesweeper gaming, uh, to make sure everything is the same in the GUI and the database itself. And try it one more time, I got a, a score seven, uh, all the V, and I go back to as a portal uh, to select all data. Now I have a four, data just like a uh, matrix from GUI. This is uh, exactly how it works from Quarkus Connect to uh, database PostSQL on top of uh, Azure. So the last step, it could be optional, but sometimes your application doesn't need to stand up all the time. That's why uh, serverless design was born. So now we're going to evolve the existing part to serverless using Quarkus uh, KNAB, uh, Quarkus uh, extension here. I'm not going to try to change any application code, but just deploy this application as serverless on top of the OpenShift. And you can uh, have another option to add a function, of course. But the reason why I'm going to evolve this application with the Quarkus feature because you have a native comparison, which is small image size, memory footprint, also fast start on time. So maybe you can solve the core start issues. So I'm going to change the uh, database generation policy from drop and create to update, which means I'm not going to delete existing data. 
And then the target deployment uh, not OpenShift is KNAVL because OpenShift serverless capability built on KNAVL, KNAVL. So when you change this target variable from OpenShift to KNATIVE, then this application will be deployed using KNAVL services. So here's a, a few more things to compile NAVL comparison. And the one last thing is just optional for my case because I'm trying to deploy this application from macOS. Uh, so NAVL compilation uh, compile based on the operating system file format. But in OpenShift, the executable file uh, packaging based on Linux operating system format. So I'm going to try to uh, packaging this NATO executable based on Linux operating system format. That's why I put in the dead last configuration. Okay, so I'm going to delete all existing uh, resources on my uh, namespace. And then when you go back to administrator on OpenShift console, you can find the uh, uh, Reddit OpenShift service operator already installed, which he allows me to deploy any application to serverless function. Go back to the developer console, just to make sure nothing in there, uh, just empty project, and then back to my console, and then try to build my application once again, Quarkus build, no test, and one more parameter here, dash dash native, uh, which he uh, allows me to uh, build native executable. As you can see, uh, I'm gonna build native image, and then it takes some time. I'm gonna make it fast, this video, uh, to save my demo time. And then you can see there are multiple steps uh, because uh, I'm gonna use Docker native file. Uh, this is a multiple step containerized application. And then once the uh, build is success, when you go back to OpenShift the console, you can see something a little bit different, a UI. You can see their KNAB service icon and then change that label, uh, represent this part based on workers. And also you can change the KNAB services to function because they actually serverless function, which he scaled down to zero in 30 seconds, just like a serverless behavior, like an Azure function. I'm going to change that. Uh, boston.dev slash function true, which he changed the KDB service as a function. It's a little, more, little bit more explicitly showcase this part subless function. It will actually scale down to zero in the next 30 seconds if you don't have any incoming network traffic, just like already terminating. So I don't want to wait for more time. I just try to access that endpoint. And as you can see, the part automatically scale up just like a serverless behavior, uh, like an Azure function. And then when you go to view logs, you can find uh, this is running on native, and then you just need to uh, point three seconds to start up. Previously, same application, we text 2.3 seconds, and this is 0.3 seconds, which is almost uh, maybe uh, nine times faster startup time and a super fast, which means uh, sometimes you got some concern for serverless function on the cloud with some poor star process time, but just less than uh, half a second. So you don't need to worry about core star anymore. So now I'm gonna go to the endpoint, uh, which is the same thing. And here's a really interesting part. This serverless function also connect to existing PostSQL running on Azure, and then the data still there. I don't delete any data, so. The full data, and then here's another window. I just try to gaming uh, proper normal workers support and the same for a reader board, and it's the same thing. Hope you understand how to deploy Quarkus application to Arrow, specifically OpenShift on Azure, and also how to connect uh, your Quarkus application to independent PostSQL on Azure. And the last time you're gonna evolve using Quarkus application as serverless, but also you can still connect to PostSQL on Azure. Thanks for watching.